Hello, everyone. Today is a good example of why events in one country can affect events in another country. On one hand, we have U.S. government, which avoided um, the government shutdown at the last minute and was able to create a provision to keep the government funded for the next 45 days. On the other hand, that had cost certain things in that bill, including the aid to Ukraine. As I wrote earlier today in my social media, as an American citizen, I am very glad that we avoided that particular nightmare because U.S. government shutdown is a truly catastrophic affair and having been through a few of them, I can testify to that. As a Ukrainian, I am crushed. This is not a game. This is a war. This is a war that has global implications. And so I'm just hoping it's high on the agenda for the next round of financial provisions to come. In other news, again, something that happens in one country affects something happening in another country. In Slovakia, the pro-Putin candidate had won the parliamentary election. As I mentioned yesterday, this has far-reaching consequences for Ukraine and also can create serious disagreements within NATO and within EU because up until this point, Slovakia has been a staunch supporter of the Ukraine. So, let's pop in and look at the news. Ukrainian city of uh, Ivano-Frankivsk uh, had a huge um, oil line fire uh, on Saturday, injuring nine people. Uh, the source of the fire is unknown. However, uh, the uh, witnesses in the area um, report a powerful explosion. So... I'm not going to draw any conclusions yet. We don't have enough information. Um, mostly my thoughts are with the families of those who were wounded in this. Meanwhile, um, Ukrainian drones attacked an administrative uh, building in the border region of Bryansk in Russia. And even as the war continues, uh, Ukraine is doing its best to maintain the dialogue uh, with its allies, in this case with the U.S., uh, the question has been posed, so what happens now? Uh, President Biden did his best to give every assurance to Ukrainian people that the aid is on the way. Um, considering how dysfunctional uh, U.S. government is right now, we'll just have to wait and see. I understand that there are other priorities. Um but like I said, this is this is not just a regional conflict. This is a world war. Make no mistake. Um, another successful raid by Ukraine uh, was um, against um, the Sochi airport, where, as in a lot of the former Soviet airport, there is kind of a uh, neighboring airports. One is civilian, one is military. So Ukraine had launched some drones against the military portions of the Sochi airport, suspending flights um, all around. And today is actually a holiday in Ukraine. Um, today is the day of the um, uh, country's defenders. It's kind of uh, kind of like a combination of Memorial Day and Veterans Day. And so v veterans throughout history are honored uh, today, including in my family where pretty much most members have been involved in the army and all of my grandparents were uh, decorated World War II veterans. As the uh, UK's uh, government had proposed to train Ukrainian soldiers directly in Ukraine instead of uh, hauling them over to Britain, uh, Dmitry Medvedev said that makes uh, British military trainers legitimate targets. This is a mistranslation, not legal targets, legitimate tra targets. So once again, um, world 
this is something to keep in mind. Uh, we already had numerous foreign nationals who perished as the result of this conflict. Going back to the annexation of Crimea when the passenger airplane was shot down following that. So this just that does not just impact people of Ukraine or people of Russia. This affects a lot of different nations in a whole lot of different ways. Fortunately, um, EU foreign policy chief uh, Joseph Borrell seemed to also understand the seriousness of the situation. And uh, I can see why. I mean, EU has the front row seats to the conflict. So I can see why he wants to keep moving this along. And I think there might be some regrets about not offering Ukraine a seat in the EU earlier because... I think Ukraine may have been in a better position to defend itself today had that happened. A couple more things I wanted to address. Um, I had a chance to talk with my parents just a couple of hours ago. So my native city of Zaporizhia has been under a whole barrage of attacks. And the targets included some industrial installations as well as a military hospital. But of course, again, um, considering the accuracy of Russian weapons, anyone could have been struck. So this was quite literally close to home. Some of these um, targets are literally within the walking distance from the house where I grew up. And um, something else... Uh, somebody commented on one of these videos recently saying, well, it's just white people with their white people problems. So to anyone who thinks like that, first of all, there are actually uh, black creators here on this platform on TikTok who posted extremely intelligent, well-researched videos talking about how the war in Ukraine affects people of color around the world. So... You can find this information right here. Second, just to give you a summary, I want you to think about the following things before you say things like that. One, a very large portion of Ukrainian grain goes to Africa. Some of it free of charge. It's donated. No grain, no bread, no food. Hunger in Africa goes out of proportion. Next, did you know that uh, <clears throat> African students, students from African countries studying in Russia have been forcibly conscripted into the Russian army to fight in Ukraine? Did you know that? Look it up. So, before you say things like it's just white people's problems, maybe educate yourself about what is actually going on. Thank you for watching.